Hi guys and dolls, how are you? I hope you are well. So, tonight I went to the Ragtime Theater downtown and we saw a movie called The Cabaret, okay? And I am going to give you some information about it. And uh, let's see, I had it on here and I don't know where it went. <laughs> so bear with me. So I went with uh, Meetup Friends and we went to the show. There's a play called The Cabaret and then there's the movie. So we went to see the movie at the theater, okay? So here is a <clears throat> overview of what the play is about. In Berlin in 1931, American cabaret singer Sally Bowles, who was played by Liza Minnelli, meets British academic Brian Roberts, Michael York, who is finishing his university studies. Despite Brian's confusion over his sexuality, the pair become lovers, but the arrival of the wealthy and decadent playboy Maximilian von Huyn complicates matters for them both. This love triangle plays out against the rise of the Nazi party and the collapse of the Weimar Republic. So that's what it's about. It was pretty cool. Um, and um, I, I, you know, it had a, a storyline, which I didn't know if it would be more musical than story. And it turns out to be mostly story with musical kind of thrown in there, here and there. So it's pretty cool. Um, one of my favorites of all time is called West Side Story. And we're not going to talk about how many times I saw that. You're, we're just not going to go there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. Um, had a good time. One of the people that we hung out with we had not seen um, for some time because he's been busy going out of town like every single weekend. So we weren't able to catch up with him anytime soon. And so to see him again was really lovely. So there were, let's see, I'm trying to remember what, uh, four, um, two, three, four, five. I think there were five of us all together and you had to wear your mask. Um, when you went up to the ticket booth and you had to wear your mask in the theater the whole time you're in the theater you know I will be so glad when this crap is over if it is ever over okay that's all I'm gonna say about that so <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a little something something about me okay um, Yeah, uh, I have, I'm a transplant from the East Coast, okay? Born and raised in upstate New York, really close to the Canadian border, like really close, okay? Like a hop, skip, and a jump from the Canadian border. And Tom, the father, <laughs> was in the Air Force. And um, so we traveled all over, you know, different places and this and that. Uh, I do enjoy the East Coast. I do. But I'm in love with the West Coast and the mountains. All right. Love it out there. Uh, you know, I traveled the country with my ex a couple of times, which is nice. You see things when the sun is going up. You see things when the sun is going down. Um, you just see all of the beauty that nature has to offer. And it's just absolutely amazing. Eventually you do crave your own house and your own bed. Okay. Um, you do. And so one of the things that I noticed when I traveled across the country is one of the truck stops is called flying J. They are the absolute, I'm not getting paid to say this. Okay. They are the absolute cleanest cleanest facility you'll ever find. Absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm 5'10", so I'm tall, right? The sinks are actually really tall, which is nice for a change. All right? Because 
I guess most people are short or something or average build. I mean, not you know what I mean, average height. But their sinks are nice and tall. And I'm like, I like this. I really do like this. So anyway, beauty is unreal. Um, Breckenridge, Colorado is absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. Uh, it looks like a postcard. To be quite honest with you, it looks like a postcard. I look like I have no clothes on. That is not true. I do. I have a dress on. Okay. So I don't want everybody thinking, she's sitting there butt ass naked. No, I got a dress on. See? <laughs> it's off the shoulders. Okay. So let's get that let's get that straight. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not nude. Um, anyway. Um the mountains. Ugh. Wow. That's all I can say about that is absolutely wow. Um, it takes a couple of days to learn how to breathe because the, the uh, what is the word? The altitude is so high, okay? And so I made the mistake one day. By the second or third day, I was starting to acclimate. And by the time I started to acclimate, we were leaving. But, um, so I made the mistake of, we, we parked across the street and then there was Burger King. So I had to, you know, kind of do this little jog number across the street to get to Burger King. That was a mistake. Okay. That was a mistake because I'm already out of breath because of the altitude and I'm not used to it. Then I jog across the street and go to Burger King. Well, that was a bad move too, because I couldn't. I couldn't order my food because I was uh, like, uh, hold on, hold on a second. Whew. And I look at them. Y'all have to excuse me. Sometimes I'm blonde. I looked at them and I said, y'all not having a hard time breathing, which is absolutely ridiculous, right? Because they're used to it. They're born and raised there or whatever the case is. They've had enough time there that they, you know, they're used to it. So that's like ridiculous. Y'all having a hard time breathing? Really? Really? Blonde moment on my part, okay? Anyway, so here's my dress again, just in case. Like I said, y'all think I'm having to be a nudie booty. Um, by the time I acclimated to it, we were leaving, but it is absolutely, Breckenridge is absolutely gorgeous. It's just spectacular you've got mountains and you've got snow on top which is weird because you're at the street level okay or at the base level of the mountains but yet you see snow so your brain is very confused by this okay um california is beautiful uh parts of san diego i love we were there in the winter time so it was in the 60s Parts of San Diego are very, the houses are on top of each other. I mean, if your neighbors could probably hear their neighbors, especially if they get loud, if they have an argument or something and it gets real loud, your neighbors might hear you. I mean, the houses are on top of each other. Um, as you guys know, the cost of living is outrageous out there. But the one good thing is uh, the water is right there. San Diego is just really pretty anything that's right on the water baby i'm so there so i really enjoyed that california is great the traffic is insane my hat goes off to y'all who live out there and you deal with that crazy traffic all the time my hat goes off to you because wow that's a lot that that's that's <laughs> that's a lot um let's see what else i went through the I want to say it's the, is it the Blue Ridge Mountains? I can't remember. Whoa, having issues. Okay, let's see. Was it North Carolina or South Carolina? Uh, what is the mountain range? Range in North Carolina. And I think it's, um, yeah, we're going to look at North Carolina. And see well it's not gonna tell me but anyway I think it's um 
mountains. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. Blue Ridge Mountains. Blue Ridge Mountains. With spectacular hiking trails, scenic waterfalls, and sweeping views, the Blue Ridge Mountains of South Carolina are an outdoor enthusiast dream. So going through those was absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Traveling is great. I, you know, I strongly advise people to leave your comfort zone. And a lot of people have the mentality of, I was born here, I was raised here, and I'm going to die here. Well, that's all well and good, but you could still travel to other places. Nothing's going to stop you from traveling. And if airlines get to the point where we're going to force you to get a, you know, vaccination or you can't fly, get in your car and go, um, the hell with them. Okay. Uh, we're just being bullied with that. And I'm not even going to go into that discussion right now, but anyway, so yeah, Blue Ridge mountains, absolutely gorgeous. Um, East coast, very pretty West coast, just out of this world with the mountains. And I forget that I have chronic pain, right? And I have a fascination for mountains and I, I would see the mountains and I'd go, Ooh, I want to hike that. And my body goes, if you could do it without me, go for it. And I'm like, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Um, but yeah. And, and speaking of hiking, I did hiking when I was a little kid. It was at a summer camp and I got, I don't know what you call this, um, um, heat exhaustion or something. I don't remember. I, cause I was a little kid. And so I remember by the time we had climbed this mountain, we were kids. So it's obviously not going to be, you know, um, advanced hiking. Okay. I believe it was sleeping giant mountain part of it. I think, um, but after we came back from it, I was at summer camp and we had, go, you know, we had make, you know, made the trek up there. And then when we came back, I wanted, I just went into my cabin and I climbed on the top bunk and I was knocked out because I was just exhausted. I didn't know that I had fibro back then. I just knew that my body was like, uh, we're done. No more of that. Okay. So that's another thing. Uh, that's another thing. And this is just the facts of life. I mean. If you have the desire to do something with your life that's really, you know, different, um, totally different from your average Joe, okay, you want to, I don't know, backpack across Europe or, you know, you want to climb mountains or you want to, I don't know, climb snow-capped mountains and, and avoid crevasses because a crevasse, you don't want to fall into it because that's bad, right? A crevasse is a really deep crack that is in the um, in the mountains, and that could be deadly. So you don't want to do that. But if there's anything in life, go back to school or anything like that that you want to do, do it now while you have your body, while you have the ability to do it. Do it now because tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. Not only that, but we have a tendency to take our bodies for granted until something happens to us and the rug gets yanked from underneath us and your whole life drastically changes. And that's what happened to me because I had symptoms of, um, what fibro when I was a kid. But I didn't know, obviously, what was going on. And then I do believe I was in remission for many, many years. And then I had a really nasty car accident. And um, y'all might know this. If you know it, then just, you know, block your ears. But anyway, I had, I was on snow. I was driving in my friend's car. We were both were in the car. I lost control on fresh snow. And we did two full spins on the highway at one point facing oncoming traffic. And I also had the sensation of falling off the bridge into a hole 
that that I waited to hit water and that didn't happen but I think I was blacked out for like a second because I don't remember the second spin I just remember us stuck on the guardrail and that's all I know I don't know anything else um and to this day, I have no clue how we got to the hospital. So anyway, I went to work after we left the hospital because I wasn't worried about me. I was worried about my best friend. I wanted to make sure she was okay. So um, I went I went home, I took a shower, and I went to work. And that was a big mistake, okay? That was a very big mistake. I was on my feet for eight hours and my coworker said, what are you doing here? I'm on the schedule. Right. But you had a really bad car accident yesterday. Why are you here? And then he goes, you're shaking. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. Tone of voice. Don't play with me, girl. And then I didn't know, but my whole, I didn't realize I was shaking, but he told me that my whole body was doing that for eight hours. So yeah, I got permanently um, jacked up and went to work anyway. Um, the reality is I would not have had the familial support. There was no support at home for me to stay in bed and rest. That was never going to be an option because I grew up in an abusive home. And when you grow up in an abusive home, that is not an option for you. Laying in bed for a couple of days because your body just went, <gasps> I mean, that's just not an option for you. Um, you're not going to get peace. You're not going to get quiet. You're not going to get, your body's not going to get the rest it needs. So anyway, long story short, that made my body prone and primed to no longer be in remission from fibromyalgia, which I'd never knew that I had until, oh, uh, it was many, many years. Let's just put it that way. I couldn't tell you, but many, 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 many years. 2006 is when the symptoms kicked in full force. Um, they're finding that we have chronic pain every day. And if you spin the wheel, imagine a big old wheel, like a fortune wheel, you spin it. That's the part of the body that gets to hurt now. It does not follow rhyme or reason. Um, I'm in pain every day. There's no day that I'm not in pain. Some days I'm in lesser pain, which those are really good days. Hallelujah. Um, so most of the pain is in my back. Um, a lot of the pain's in my neck. It just depends. I've learned to do what I can to avoid the pain rather than treat it once it starts. Okay. So the reason I'm getting to all this is you never know what life's going to bring you. You just don't know. So you don't know if you'll develop a, a disability. Mine's genetic. Um, the mother has lupus. I don't have lupus. I tested negative for that. There's no test for fibro. They just have to rule out everything else like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and things like that. Okay. Um, so there is a genetic component to it and a lot of the pain is abnormalities in our brain. And so bottom line is you never know when your life is going to drastically change and when opportunities are taken away from you. You just don't know when that's going to happen. So please, whatever you're passionate about, I say go for it because you do not know when your time is up, you don't know when it's time for you to leave this earth. You don't know if your body's going to break down and you'll never be the same. I've got a couple of friends online who were paralyzed doing simple things, jumping in the water and the way the water was more shallow than they thought it would be. And they permanently became paralyzed. So you just don't freaking know you don't know. So yeah, if you get anything that you're passionate about, please do it. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Go for it. You just don't know. You just don't know. Um, if you imagine those of you that know what a bodysuit is 
like dancers wear them, a unitard, okay? So I want you to imagine a unitard from your neck all the way down and imagine it being so tight that it's squeezing on your body. That's what fibro feels like. And I don't know if that's a good analogy, but that's what it feels like. And sometimes with the nerve pain, it feels like a cattle prod. I've been jabbed with a cattle prod because there's electrical nerve pain that comes out of nowhere. And sometimes it takes my breath away. Um, my friends are used to it, so they're just, they don't even acknowledge it unless I take a longer time to respond back to them. I'm just sitting there like, <sighs> okay, what were you saying? Then they're like, whoa, you okay? You know, that kind of thing. But they're kind of used to it. I'm kind of used to it. Um, we take a long time to heal. Um, speaking of healing, my leg is doing very, very well. Um, very well, considering how many surgeries? Okay. Uh, the injury and then a surgery and then another surgery on it. So it's doing very well, but we do take a long time to heal. But besides that, my leg is doing really well. Is there some discomfort? Yeah, some tenderness still. Yeah, but it's it's trudging along each day as a, as a um, you know, better than the day before. So I really dig that. But yeah, that, that's my whole message through this video is you never know when things change for you permanently and you don't want to be in a situation where you can no longer do the things that were easy for you to do before because your body is just not going to permit it. And another thing that really gets on my nerves People expect when you're when you have a disability to look like you have a disability. What does that even mean? That doesn't make any sense. You know, and I went to another video where they were talking about disability and one lady said, one thing I hate is when people say, but you don't look disabled. You know what my response to that is? Ted Bundy didn't look like a killer either. She kind of liked that. I got likes on that comment because it's just stupid. He was handsome. He was charismatic. He was charming. He had a great smile. He was a law student. He was, it appears that he's trying to get his life on track. And he's a serial killer who bludgeoned women to death with violent rage. So don't tell me who looks like what, because nobody Nobody looks like a killer, a rapist, or anything else, but yet they still do it. And their public persona is still, hi, how are you? It's great to see you. Oh, my God. How are your grandkids doing? You know, and all that charisma is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Be because behind closed doors, they're doing some horrific, horrific things. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. But one of the things that blows my mind is this guy that was a beginning to, to be a serial killer and they had enough evidence on him to bring him in for questioning and they asked him about the killing and this is what he says and I don't know if I mentioned it in another video and if I did I'm sorry but he said I'm a killer that's my hobby just that casual just that matter of fact that's my hobby Everybody has a hobby. I mean, that's his whole attitude. And I kill. Wow. Wow. He didn't look like a killer either. Mm -hmm. Let's not go by looks, people. Let's use some sense, okay? <laughs> anyway, so that's what I did tonight. Um, just wanted to have a little pep talk with y'all. And I hope that life is treating you well. Please, please, please follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. Life can change in an instant. We could be gone tomorrow. We could be dead tomorrow. We could be dead five minutes from now. I have, you guys know this, I had a nurse practitioner and her husband and another guy were killed in a head-on collision a couple of summers ago. They never saw that, you know, that their life would be snuffed out like that. You just never know. So you don't know if you're going to become, if anything should happen to you. You just don't know. So follow your dreams. Make them happen. 
before something happens that you can no longer follow those dreams for whatever reason, a ma major life change, whatever that may be, whatever that may look like for you. Okay, follow your dreams. All right, love you guys. Take care.